Hey everybody, Dan here for Comic Frontline. We're going to do an indie hall, but it's actually going to be the New York Comic Con Hall. Uh, 2017 New York Comic Con came and went. I did pick up a uh, rather uh, large amount of items. Uh, pretty much mostly from the small press area and Artist Alley. Uh, found a lot of good things that uh, I was interested in. It was packed as usual, uh, but, you know, I mean, four days I was there, all four, pretty much found my way around, slowly but surely, getting things here and there. Uh, so, actually, before I get into that big stack of books, I'll get this uh, print portfolio thing going. Uh, it's by Marcus Williams, uh, Volume 1, The Art of Ma Marcus Williams. This is a Young Heroes Unlimited. So I had actually seen his work on Facebook prior to going to the con. was surprised to see him in the uh, publisher's area. Actually, uh, unlike many years, because Artist Alley, they this year New York Comic Con, Artist Alley had to be condensed, being that the usual spot for Artist Alley was under construction, so they had to put it in a different hall where there wasn't a lot of circulation, but at any rate, it was great to see the artist there, but as a result of this, uh, many of the artists ended up in the main floor, uh, you know, probably more likely in the small publisher uh, area, uh, where they do have books that they're putting out, so it's not like they're uh, exclusively Artist Alley, but they uh, couldn't fit them all in there. So in this respect, uh, I actually found this artist in that area. Just checking out this spiral binding here, which is a little bit of a different uh, type of setup. Let me just make sure this is in. Uh, well, like I said, this was a print collection. Okay, so let's see, I'll open up another page. I really loved his uh, style when I first saw it on Facebook. Was happy to be able to meet him in person and actually get an original piece, but uh, we will get into that at the end of the haul. So uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go into the books. Why not? Oh, it's a pile, as I told you, a pile of books here. All right. Let's start off on the bottom of the pile, because that is the biggest book, and it'll be a nice one to uh, start out with. The Marvel Art of Art Adams, of Arthur Adams. Well, it's Art Adams. You know him as both. Um... I have all the sketchbooks from previous years. This one uh, is a hardcover book. Spare no expense at uh, making this one. And really just chock full of uh, the amazing work of Arthur Adams, one of my favorites. See some preliminary work in pencil, the inked work. And what's great about this is you have some commentary from Arthur on all these pieces. Longtime fan of Arthur Adams. Uh, you know, the Long Shot May series impressed me, of course, everything after that. His original creator-owned uh, Monkey Man O'Brien was a favorite of mine. Uh, definitely within, you know, my top five. You know, sometimes when push comes to shove, I'll even name uh, Arthur Adams as my favorite. But, you know, that's... Sometimes a little rotating there. I mean, grew up uh, with George Perez being my favorite, and he still, you know, ranks highly among uh, all my top artists. But Arthur Adams definitely, uh, you know, is right up there, if not, like I said, at the top. Um, so I'm always thrilled to get any of his art books. And I was happy to get that one from Art personally. Talked to him a bit about Monkey Man O'Brien. He's uh, 
you know, would like to get back to it. Of course, you know, these Marvel covers and everything uh, help pay the mortgage and uh, Arthur is married with a child, so he has to take care of that. But would love to see Monkey Man O'Brien make his way back. All right. Um, some of you may have seen my uh, video where I interviewed uh, J.D. Rosario, the publisher of Unstoppable Comics. And uh, not only did I interview him, but I did pick up uh, several books from him. Um, we have Unstoppable Origins, which has kind of like the origins of three of his main characters. And I've already read this and enjoyed it. This is a trade paperback. So he had the individual issues, but I just jumped in with the trade. And speaking of trades, I also popped in with uh, Shield of the Interceptor. Okay, so JD has written all these. And he's had uh, various artists uh, collaborate with him. And high quality. Uh, you know, we had a lot to talk about, being that we kind of do the same thing that I do with Argo Comics in the fact that we are both uh, writing, well, creating our characters, writing our stories, collaborating with artists, and we both do our own lettering. Um which I just enjoy doing so that I can like kind of edit the script as I go along, choose what art not to cover or to cover. Um, but yeah, JD was kind of like a kindred soul in that respect. And as I said, there's another video here on Comic Frontline where I interview him and he talks a bit about his comics. Uh, another comic that I had gotten from him and this is going to be kind of like, uh, you know, as I publish Argo 5, he has his own team book here. His main team probably is Storm Chasers, okay? And this is kind of like a wrap cover. Now, he's kind of uh, doing a revamp on the first three issues. So this is the issue one revamp. Two and three have not been done yet, so uh, he's going to probably kickstart those, I believe. And so I have one, I have four, five, six, and seven. So I'm going to probably just hold off a little bit until uh, he does a revamp on two and three, because I don't really want to go from one to... Uh, four, five, six, seven, but like I said, uh, I kind of like, just like I do in the inside cover of Argo 5, he has kind of like a headshot of the team, so you kind of know who's who, and uh, yeah, superhero, indie superhero team books are my favorite, so this will be undoubtedly uh, something that I will enjoy. All right, now there was another Oh, where did I put that now? Oh, here it is. Okay. There's another indie publisher who puts out Spinneret. Okay. Several volumes of Spinneret have been released. So, this one is actually not the first volume, but it was one of the later volumes. It was in color. Again, it's a trade. And he said it was a standalone story. So I figured, okay, let me, uh, even though it's not the first one, let me just give it a try out on this. And it's a high quality art. I will check out the story and see what goes on there. Okay. Art looks very good. Um, there's a character in the story, the White Heron. Okay, she's within the story. And I really liked the look of that book. So this is a smaller trade. This one, unlike the other one, is kind of like a black and white. But uh, both artists were there. They might have even been, because I was talking to the writer for the most part, but they might have been a husband and wife team doing the art here. Can't be sure of that, but if not, and they were just a uh, 
female artist on Spinneret and a male artist on White Heron. Both very talented people. I bought both books. I had them sign the inside uh, front cover of these. So both uh, look very good. They'll be towards the top of my reading list. All right. It was another company I came across. Uh, let's see, which is the company name? Lion Forge. Oh, okay. So I've heard of them before. They had this book, Noble. Oops, let's put it the right way here. Noble. Okay. Again, this was a trade collecting a number of issues. After careful consideration and flipping through it, here's number uh, five. So this collects one to four. And then we add issue five. So I looked through it and I did like what I see. So I picked it up. I know somewhere in this stack I have a. Uh, Lion Forge sampler that they gave as well. Here it is. Okay, so they chucked that in for for free with the uh, purchase. And uh, like I said, there was Noble, but then where is it? I got them in reverse order here. Let me get them right. One, two, and three of Excel. Okay. Excel's uh, drawn by Damien Scott, who used to do Robin for DC. I really enjoyed his work uh, to the point where I even got a uh, little chain reaction pinup that was published in Argo Comics at some point from Damien Scott. And now he's uh, with Lion Forge doing this Excel book, which is like a super speedster. So I will be interested in getting to read that. Let me uh, jump to this book right here. Okay, on Kickstarter I had backed uh, Leaving Megalopolis, and now we had Surviving Megalopolis by Gail Simone and Jim Calafiore. Um, I guess they were most noted for uh, Secret Six they had done for DC, and then they had done their Kickstarter for uh, Leaving Megalopolis, and that was a great story. I read it, kind of like uh, superheroes as zombies, and uh, as with like Walking Dead, the story centered on the survivors trying to uh, survive these superhero zombies. So... This one actually, I talked to Jim, and I actually, uh, after talking to him, picked it up online. So, because um, he only had the uh, convention version, and I was looking for the regular version. So, talked to him, and I've gotten a number of pinups from uh, Jim for Argo Comics as well. So, always enjoy his work. Uh, he was great on so many titles, and I always look for whatever he has coming out. Uh, here is issues two and three, because I already had zero and one, of Yumi and Ever. Okay? Unless that's pronounced Yume, but I think it's Yumi and Ever. And uh, this is Alicia Martinez does this book. Um... This is her own creator, own title. She's done other work. Uh, I think up until last year, she was doing the WWE comics. And as a wrestling fan, I had picked up a number of them with her work. Uh, she's doing work for DC right now, but this is her own uh, baby here. And I really, uh, really loved issue zero and one. So I'm happy to see her continue slowly but surely, with two and three here of Yumi and Ever. Um, 
she had been printing them at Kablam, which but she didn't have them uh, listed on Indie Planet, and I strongly suggested that she do that so that people can uh, pick up their own copies. So hopefully uh, that'll get done, and hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on all those issues at Indie Planet. I had come across Ed Bennis's uh, table. He does work, of course, for DC, and he had a sketchbook here, which I was more than happy to uh, get a copy of. Love Ed Bennis's work, and I actually have a cover coming up from his uh, brother, Fred Bennis. Okay, so there is Ed Bennis. But there is also Fred Bennis, which I have a cover uh, that I already have in my possession for a future issue. And beyond them, there's also Mariah Bennis, which is their uh, sister. She does work as well. They're all uh, within Comic-Con Art. I believe their company is called Out of Brazil. Uh, let's see where we will go next. We will go here. Okay. I had a black and white collection of this, but this is now the expanded version. Okay, Ryan Brown's Blast Furnace. Okay, now it's extended, it's in color, it's completed, and Ryan Brown, famous for God Hates Astronauts over at Image, uh, one of my favorite indie titles, love his work. Another gentleman who I've gotten pinups for from for Argo Comics. I actually got some art from him at this show as well. And on top of it all, he did a little sketch right here on the inside front cover. Um, but as you can see, Blast Furnace. Nice full trade in color. This will have to uh, be moved up on my uh, to-read list because I love his work. Right now he's doing Cursed Words with Charles Soule. Uh, I believe that's over an image. I have that trade to read, and that has to be moved up towards the top of my list as well. Um, as with Ed Bennis, I was in Artist Alley, and I did come across another sketchbook. Okay, Art Adams, Ed Bennis, and now Sketchbook 28 for Ben Caldwell, okay, who I recall, I guess he was uh, started out at Aspen, um, but I was looking through this sketchbook, he had a number of them, this one in particular had this like beautiful tonal work that he had done with pencils, um, I was really impressed with that. And uh, being an artist myself and a lover of art, this was just a book I had to pick up. All right. Uh, let's see. Stonebot Presents. It's kind of like a freebie. I guess this is a Stonebot Comics. So I'm going to check out what they have. He has some covers on the back cover. Always good to get like a uh, preview of, uh, and you know, some of this stuff does look up my alley. So it'll be, uh, you know, you get this sampler here, and it does its job in the fact that it makes you interested in maybe purchasing some books that they have. Uh, okay. Uh, you have another sketchbook, artist who I've uh, followed online. Okay. Genevieve, let's see, Brumall, okay, Genevieve Brumall, um, this is the Broom Closet, Volume 2, so this was an art book she had, she does really exceptional work, okay, um, I believe she's done some, like, Lady Death covers and stuff like that. She was a very, very talented artist. Uh, I love her work and was happy to get that book from her. 
Uh, well, this is a little off the indie trail here, but they did have a free Supergirl Racing Jesse Quick comic. Okay. Uh, it's an Ivan Rice cover. And when I first looked at the interior, it seemed to me to be like Chris Batista. When I first looked at the art, that's actually Paco Diaz. So, both are artists that I enjoy. Um, so, it was nice to get that as a freebie, for sure. And I guess I just grabbed one of these. It's a special convention sampler of Mad with a Stranger Things, which I don't even watch, parody in it. Uh, I was flipping through it before. You know, I used to buy Mad. That's a Sergio Aragonese uh, Wonder Woman story in it. So, might not be the thing uh, for me to hold on to. I might uh, read it and then it is a convention exclusive, so maybe someone on eBay might uh, like it. Um, have this little Batman Join the League bookmark. I guess it was one booth that had Marvel Cosmic Cubes that they were handing out. Let's see which company this is. It says the company on it. Uh, it just says Secret Empire, Marvel. I'm not sure it was the Marvel booth, though. You know, you're walking around, a lot of stuff to do. Um, one of the few, like, lines that I waited on was, uh, you know, I've been watching the, uh, the Tick on Amazon Prime. Uh, Tick comic, the original Ben Edlin run. Uh, was a huge favorite of mine. Uh, met Ben Edlin, Ed, uh, Ben Edlin at a convention years ago. Got an original Tick sketch from him. Um, before the cartoon or anything it hit. Uh, and as a result of, I guess, the popularity of the Amazon Prime show, they had the Danger Boat which anyone who would watch the series will know it's uh, it's this big boat that actually has an artificial intelligence within it, and it's another uh, street-level uh, uh, crime fighter whose name escapes me at the moment, but he was uh, using that as a headquarters. Um, at any rate, they had the danger boat. You had to wait on this line. They sent probably four or five in at a time. You had a computer screen where you kind of typed up your own superhero profile. Oh, I left it in the other room. They give you a can of uh, faux uh, spam, which was something I believe he was eating. Um, but in addition to that, after you were all done, okay, the tick being uh, blue, and this big blue poncho that I'm not going to fully unfold because it's going to uh, go to a friend of mine. So I want to keep it folded, but it was, you know, Amazon Prime. You see the tick. I guess it says protect. Protected. Protected by the tick. So, like I said. Okay, it's big blue poncho, which I guess is appropriate if you're in that danger boat and the waves are hitting. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. As I said, this is kind of stuff that will be published in Argo Comics. So I'm just going to give a very super quick preview shot of these. Um, we had the uh, well, Ryan Brown piece for an upcoming uh, comic that I can't really reveal the title of. Uh, I did reveal that I'm doing a book, Big House Blues, for uh, the Powerverse. Okay, I made that announcement at New York Comic Con. Um, and that is art by Tom Rainey, who uh, is one of my favorite artists. When you talk about favorite artists and art atoms, uh, 
Tom Rainey definitely uh, fit that mold of, you know, who my favorites are. Right now, he has a uh, new book coming out. Him, uh, Bart Sears, Andy Smith all get together with Ominous Press as their uh, company. Uh, a lot of impressive stuff coming from them. And I will uh, look forward to anything he puts out. Stormwatch, his uh, run on Stormwatch was one of my favorite comic book runs, period. Um, Stormwatch the comic, one of my favorite indie comics, or comics in general, uh, period. So, thrilled to get Tom Rainey art and Ryan Brown art at the convention. As I said, Marcus Williams, who had done this Young Heroes Unlimited portfolio that I showed you, did a uh, Law and Order piece for me, and I do have the uh, Law and Order holiday special coming, uh, hopefully before Christmas, because that would make it more appropriate. So I'm hard at work lettering that, and lettering Argo 5 number 25, so I have been a busy guy. So, that's going to wrap it up for the New York Comic Con 2017 haul. Keep coming back to Comic Frontline for all your comics news, reviews, and entertainment.